All praise is due to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. May peace and blessings be upon the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his household and his companions. My dear brothers and sisters, we are in the midst of an incomparable month. It is a great and noble month which holds countless merits and virtues. It is a season rich with gains for those who partake in good deeds. It is a month that excels other months by a night that is better than a thousand months. Blessed be the one who sincerely fasts in this month, invokes Allah in the morning and in the evening, and wakes up during the nights in order to pray and devote his life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, the first quarter of Ramadan is already behind us. A quarter of it is already gone. But we have to make sure that the rest of it is not gone in vain. That we take advantage of the remaining days. So let us hasten to use the remaining days in thanking Allah for His blessings and making an extra effort to do righteous deeds and repent to Him. Because the hours of the month are quickly coming to an end. Last week we weren't even fasting and now Friday has been five, six, seven fasts already. So many fasts have already gone by. So let us make the good deeds as much as possible, commit as many good deeds, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Because if we hold fast to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make good use of our time, inshaAllah we will be victorious and free from all evils. And let us prepare for that day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Ya ibadi, innama hiya a'malukum. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say on that day, O oh my servants, these are only your deeds which I show you, which I enumerate for you, and upon which I will reward you. So whoever finds good reward therefrom, let him thank Allah. And whoever finds otherwise, let him blame no one but himself. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say on that day, here are your a'mal. Nothing has been changed from them. And if you have received good, then thank Allah. And if you receive otherwise, then blame no one but yourselves. That you did not take advantage of those opportunities to gain that Jannah that I had for you waiting. That reward, you were not able to get it. <coughs> My dear brothers and sisters, where are those who witnessed the last Ramadan with us? Have they not left this world? Where are those who started the Ramadan with us? Some of them have also left us as well. And before time goes, you know, before anything happens, we'll be gone also. You never know when it will happen. Like this, people, people go, come and go all the time. So we have to make use of our time. That is the most important thing. Why are we here? We are here to worship Allah for a limited amount of time. And that time you don't even know. So you have to make good use of that time. Allah has blessed us to let us see this Ramadan. And to experience this Ramadan in this year, that means that we have to thank Him by taking advantage of this Ramadan. We have to be ready for that day when we will not be allowed to make any more good deeds and we will go into the grave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually says in the Quran, He says that do the good deeds before you are sent to the grave. Because if you do not do enough, you will ask Allah, Oh Allah, send me back. Send me back so that I become of those who are righteous and so that I can give in charity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allahu nafsan idha jaa ajaluha. That once that time has come, you will not go back. And those deeds are the only deeds, the ones that you take with you to the grave. So we ask Allah to make those deeds the best deeds, inshaAllah. Say Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, you probably heard the saying that the cream rises to the top. So the days of Ramadan are the cream of the worldly days. He who is blessed in these days is indeed fortunate. And he who is deprived of the blessings in this month is the most unfortunate. He who does not work for his final abode in these days has wronged himself and will be blameworthy. And I'll remind you of the hadith that we talked about last week. That the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was getting on top of the member. And as he was stepping on the first step, the second step, the third step, he said, Ameen at every step. And the Sahaba Radwanullah Ta'ala Alayhi Majma'een asked him, Why were you saying Ameen, Ya Rasulullah? As you were ascending the pulpit, why did you continue to say Ameen three times? You said Ameen. Why did you say Ameen, Ya Rasulullah? And the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi Wasallam told them, He said, It was Jibreel Alayhi Salam who came to me and said, Whoever lived to witness Ramadan and was not forgiven his sins, May Allah keep him away from his mercy. 
that whoever witnessed Ramadan and was not able to get his sins forgiven, may Allah keep him away from his mercy. And the Prophet ﷺ said, that is why I was saying Ameen. And he told the Sahabi, he said, you say Ameen. And the Sahabi said, even I said Ameen on this dua. So we ask Allah to save us from that, my dear brothers and sisters. If we are negligent in good deeds in this Ramadan, can we be certain that we will live to witness the next Ramadan? Some people say, well, you know, we have 30 days here. We'll have 30 days next year. But you're not guaranteed next year. You're not even guaranteed next month. You never know when life will come and take it away. When Allah will come and have your time is up and the angel will come to get you. The angel of death will come to get you. So you have to take advantage of this opportunity. Not you, but me as well. All of us together. We have to make an extra effort, especially in these days. Quarter of Ramadan is gone. Three quarters are left. Before you know it, we will be celebrating Eid. Before you know it, we will be celebrating Eid. So we have to take advantage of these days. The days of Ramadan must be honored. Do we guard ourselves from idle talks and immoral looks? Do we prevent our limbs from pastime and bad deeds? Have we prepared provisions that are suitable for our journey in the hereafter? Or are we among those who engage in deeds which displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wander in this world as if we are created for nothing but the enjoyment of this life? In this month, let us guard our eyes, our tongues, and the rest of our limbs from sins. Though it is incumbent upon us to do so at all times, it becomes even more important in the month of Ramadan. A Muslim is one person who has at all times has to control his gaze, has to control his tongue, has to control his ears. But it becomes doubly important in Ramadan. Because if you do not do it in Ramadan, then when will you do it? So in this Ramadan, not only should we be hungry from the food and the drink and thirsty from the drink. I'm very thirsty right now, by the way. But we should be hungry and thirsty. Not only that, but our senses, our eyes, our ears, and our tongues have to be very, very careful that we never say anything that is harmful to anyone or never look at anything that is harmful for us as well. Lowering the gaze is very important and making sure to engage the tongue in dhikr is the best thing. Because if you fast and at the same time you're gossiping or you're lying or you're talking about others, then that will nullify that fast. It will make it weaker. It will make that fast weaker. And the Prophet sallallahu has even said as much in the book of Imam Bukhari. He said, whoever does not refrain from lying and false deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need for him giving up the food and the drink. That Allah cares not for you giving up food and drink if you continue to go on lying and doing the bad deeds. And again, I share with you the advice that I shared with you last week that Jabir bin Abdullah said that when you fast, let your ears and your tongue also fast by keeping away from lying and forbidden things. Do not harm your neighbor. Let tranquility and peace be your habit. And let there be a difference between your fasting and your non-fasting deed, uh, and your non-fasting days. So that when you're in Ramadan, you have to make sure that your, you know, that your conduct is exemplary. It is the best conduct. Not only should you be hungry and thirsty, but you should also be staying away from every bad deed as well. May Allah give us the tawfiq to do so. My dear brothers and sisters, why are our righteous brothers and sisters standing up for good deeds and we are sitting down? Why are they observing the night prayer and we are sleeping? Why is it that when the faithful slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are seen standing in prayer, we are not seen among them? Why is it that when righteous people are mentioned, we are not mentioned with them? It is because our deeds are very little. It is because that we are trying to pay for Jannah with very few good deeds. And the, the, the few good deeds that we have are very deficient in quality. Our good deeds lack ikhlas, they lack sincerity. We do not really do them for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, they're very little. Our good deeds are very little. And the ones that we have, they don't even have sincerity in them. And yet with these deeds, we are trying to gain the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The jannah, the eternal life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises in the Quran where he says he will give you rivers of wine, rivers of water, rivers of milk, rivers of honey. In jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises it. And instead of doing the best deeds to pay for this reward, we give him the little deeds and the ones without ikhlas. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grant us ikhlas. Say ameen. 
The righteous people, my dear brothers and sisters, the Sahaba Radwanullahi Ta'ala Ali Majma'een, their example is the best. Obviously, the Prophet's example is the best, but we can never reach that high. Follow the stars, the Prophet said. They would spend their Ramadan in sleepless nights out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would be separated from their beds. They would weep out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their hearts were tender and they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the middle of the night while other people were asleep. Now what happens is that we go to the masjid, we pray the Isha Salah, we hurry through the motions. If we pray all the taraweeh, Allah A'lam, wherever you pray eight, we pray 20, whatever happens, you pray as fast as possible. First thing you want to do is you want to go home and you're thinking about the bed the whole time, first of all, in taraweeh, I want to go home and I want to go to sleep. But the Sahaba Radwanullah Ta'ala Alayhi Wajma'een, they couldn't care less for their beds. They used to stay up all night weeping to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and engaged in salah as well. And we can't do anything but sleep. We need those eight hours of sleep. We want to have that sleep. So we have to change our habit, if not for our lifetime, but at least in this month. This one month, this one month. You're not guaranteed the next month. So make sure that we try, I try and you will try inshallah, as much as possible, to engage in as much salawat as possible. Say ameen inshallah. Also, let me go back to one thing last week I shared with you. Allah A'lam, I don't know in this masjid if they pray 8 rak'ahs, 20 rak'ahs. Allah knows best. There is a hadith in the book of Imam Bukhari that the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam would never pray more than 8 rak'ahs in Qiyamul Layl. And with that he would pray 3 rak'ahs of Witr. And this is the proof that people use to say that Taraweeh is only 8 rak'ahs and it is not more. Or it is 8 plus the 3 that is the Witr. Also, I would like to say on this, first of all, there is no, there is no denying the authenticity of this hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, where it is mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam prayed the eight rak'ahs and the three with the witr, and that was all that he ever did in front of her, and that all he, that, that he ever did, period. First of all, that I would like to make the point, it is that it was the qiyamul layl, the tahajjud prayer of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam. It was not the taraweeh, but the tahajjud prayer of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala And secondly, perhaps more importantly, at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, all the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala alayhi majma'een were gathered together that were alive at that time. And there was a conference held for that purpose, whether the taraweeh should be eight rak'ahs or the taraweeh should be 20 rak'ahs, and the ijma', the consensus of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala alayhi majma'een under the supervision of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, was that the taraweeh should be 20 rak'ahs. That the taraweeh should be 20 rak'ahs. And also at that time, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was also alive. And she had no objection to this as well. So this is one of the misconceptions that I wanted to take away. Is it 8 or is it 20? We should always endeavor that the Prophet ﷺ said, try to do as much as possible. So the 20 is obviously more than the 8. And this is the month to do as much as possible. So if you can do 20, and if you can't do 20, you should endeavor to do 20, inshallah. It is up to you. You want to do 8, you can do 8. But alhamdulillah, stick to 20, stick to as many good deeds. Because as many good deeds as we have, they will not even be enough. It is possible. So we do as much as possible, inshallah, hoping that Allah will accept it, inshallah. Say ameen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us try to make amends for our past mistakes. Join the righteous people in their acts of worship and fill our life with the obedience to our Lord. Let us endeavor to perform the nightly prayer, the taraweeh, as I mentioned, for the remaining part of the month. For the Prophet wasallam said, whoever performs the congregational night prayer during Ramadan with faith and sincerity, his past sins will be forgiven. That the one who prays the taraweeh with faith and sincerity, his past sins will be forgiven, as the Prophet wasallam has said. The month of Ramadan is a month of reflection over the glorious Qur'an. Because obviously in the, in the month of Ramadan, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن It is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it is an opportunity for perfecting its recitation and reviewing what we have memorized of the Qur'an. I was watching one of the young boys, mashallah, he's sitting here in the masjid and he's engaged in reading of the Qur'an. Very good, very good deeds to do. Reading of the Qur'an is very, very important, especially so in Ramadan, my dear brothers and sisters. The Prophet wasallam said, Always review what you have memorized of the Qur'an, for it escapes from people's hearts faster than the cattle when it escapes with its tying rope. And he wasallam also said, The example of the one who memorizes the Qur'an is like that of the tied camel. 
If it is constantly checked and retied, it will remain. But if it is left, it will escape. This is the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that every Ramadan he would review the Quran with Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. And so we follow this sunnah as well. Whatever we have memorized, we have to review it. And if we've memorized a little, we have to double it, inshallah. Try to memorize as much as possible. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what you have memorized, review it. Review it. Don't just read it and forget it. Many hufad that I have seen have memorized the Quran and a year later they forgot every single word. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the wrong example. We have to review. And then I've seen the example of people who every day they read 10 juz just to review. Every single day they read 10 juz. Or others read 7 juz every day to review their Quran and to keep it strong. So may Allah make us among those people, inshallah. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah has honored us with the Holy Quran. So let us reflect over its verses, follow its injunctions, and let us not rush its reading. A man told Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an that he recited Surah Qaf from the 26th juz all the way until Surah Nas. From Surah Qaf of the 26th juz, 27, 28, 29, and 30. He said, I recited all of this in one single rak'ah. He was saying to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an said, are you rushing it like a poem? Are you rushing the Quran like a poem? There are some people who recite the Quran and it does not exceed their collarbones. But when it penetrates the heart and becomes firmly established, therein it benefits. So reading Quran as much as possible is very important. But reflecting over the verses of the Quran is equally important. It is doubly important. Read If you, if you read little but you reflect over it, that is better for you than reading a lot and not knowing what you were even saying. It is very important for us to know the meaning of the Quran as well. May Allah give us the tawfiq to do so. Say Ameen. Give you the advice. One thing I forgot to tell you about Imam, Imam Abu Hanifa in the month of Ramadan, I was trying and I've tried very hard myself to, memor to read as much Quran as possible in this month. And re leading Taraweeh, the problem is that when you lead Taraweeh, you don't want to read too much because you will, there's so many mutashabihat in the Quran. If you keep on reading over and over again, you're going to mix up your Taraweeh at night. And nobody wants to stand up there and read Taraweeh and make 50, 60 mistakes every night. Or 50, 60 is obviously exaggerating. 5, 10 mistakes is a little bit too much. For me, if I make two mistakes, it's too much for me. But we, should, we always try to read as, as little as possible. Only that what we have to do in Taraweeh. So this month I tried, inshallah, I'm going to try to do at least 10 Quran. Alhamdulillah, I've gotten one done already. I did 15 juz one day, alhamdulillah. And then the other days I got busy, you know, stuff happens. Astaghfirullah, Allah give me the tawfiq to continue it. But my example is nothing to you. The example of Imam Abu Hanifa that I wanted to give, with, give to you was that in the month of Ramadan, Imam Abu Hanifa used to read more than 60 Qur'an. He used to complete more than 60 Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. More than 60. I think it was either 61 or 63. I don't remember the exact number. So what does that mean? That means at least two Qur'ans every single day. 30 days, two Qur'ans every single day. Can you imagine that? It's impossible for us. And nobody's asking you to read 60. But read as much as possible, inshallah. Allah gave us a tawfiq to do so. There is this beautiful example also that I wanted to share with you that Abdullah ibn Idris, Idris radiallahu an, was passing away. He was dying. He was on his deathbed. And his daughter came by his side. Obviously, which daughter or any son, anyone doesn't want to see anyone die, especially a daughter to see her father in that condition. And he was dying and he was passing away in his last moments. And she was sitting by his side weeping, obviously, out of sorrow. And Abdullah ibn Idris radiallahu an, said to her, my daughter, do not cry. He was consoling her. He said, my daughter, do not cry. For I have recited the entire Qur'an, the whole Qur'an in preparation of this moment 4,000 times in my life. That in preparation for my death, I recited the Qur'an 4,000 times. So do not cry over me. Subhanallah. This is the example of the Sahaba Ardwanullah Ta'ala Ali Majma'i. We ask Allah to make us like them, inshaAllah. Let us hold fast to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strongly and let us not be distracted from our ultimate goal of attaining paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Then, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ And then after that Allah said, وَمَن لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ That whoever does not judge by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, such are the disbelievers. Such are the disbelievers. And whosoever does not judge by that which Allah has revealed, such are the wrongdoers. And whosoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, such are the fasiqun, the rebellious. What does that mean? That means that our answers are in the Qur'an. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Quran that the answer that you need is in this book. If you do not go by this book, you are among the kafirun. If you do not go by this book, you are among the wrongdoers. If you do not go by this book, you do not judge by this book that you are among those who are rebellious. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He make it so that our every action coincides with the Quran, inshaAllah. Say Ameen. Ameen. Come on, guys. Say Ameen. Let's go. What's going on? Are you sleeping on me? Ameen. Ameen. You know, if you say Ameen, nothing is going to hurt. It's not going to poke you in the heart. It's not going to hurt your ribs. It's not going to hurt your stomach, make you even more hungry or more thirsty. Saying Ameen is a good thing. It is a dua to say Ameen. Allah, you never know who will, whose dua will be accepted. There might be someone in here so righteous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears his Ameen and Allah accepts it. So say Ameen one time loudly. Ameen. Ameen. Thank you. Uh, now I know that you're awake. My dear brothers and sisters, Ramadan is also the month for liberation from hellfire. It is the month of liberation from the hellfire. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has said that the Almighty Allah at every time of breaking fast frees some of his slaves from hellfire. That every time at the time of breaking fast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is busy freeing his slaves from the hellfire. And what are we doing at the time of breaking fast? Smelling the aromas of the kitchen, the pakore and the samosa and all the, you know, we're waiting to eat. And Allah at that time is ready to forgive and He is freeing people from the fire of hell, my dear brothers and sisters. That time is important. That time is important. If we're not eating, then we're talking about nonsense, games and, you know, worldly life. We need to take this time to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah make me among those that you are freeing from the hellfire at this moment. May Allah make it so. Say Ameen. Ameen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. O you who believe, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincere repentance. My dear brothers and sisters, Sincere repentance is what is needed for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us paradise. And so it is by praising Allah, admitting, admitting our own sins and abstaining from them. So we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you forgive us, Ya Allah, for our sins and we make a real effort. We make an effort not to go back to that sin. That is very important. For repentance to be accepted, you have to make an effort never to go back to that same sin. Even if you do. But you cannot think that when you are making dua, I am making dua right now, but when I am done, I'm going to go and commit the same sin. No. When you're making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I'm sorry that I have lied this one time or that time. So forgive me for that. And I have to think that I will never again lie. Never again lie. And then that repentance will find acceptance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshaAllah. But if at the same time say, Ya Allah, forgive me uh, for lying, and I don't really mean it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is in the hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. That you have the sincere repentance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. Last hadith that I wanted to share with you. MashaAllah, there's a lot of barakah in this time today. I'm looking at the clock, it's not even moving. I think it's you know, the barakat of Ramadan and MashaAllah, everyone here, SubhanAllah, is fasting. So Allah accept our fast, inshaAllah. That the Aisha radiallahu ta'ala has said that the one, when the month of Ramadan enters its last 10 days, and I know obviously we're still away away from, you know, 10 days. That Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that the, when the month of Ramadan enters its last 10 days, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam spends his nights praying and wakes up his family to join him. And he would tighten his belt. And he would tighten his belt. What does that mean? That in the last 10 days, first of all, who are we talking about? We're talking about Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is that the last 10 days, he would make an extra effort. Was he in the, la in the 20 days preceding it not making an effort? Was he in the month before not making an effort? He used to pray at night so long that his feet would be swollen and that was his normal practice. But in the last 10 days of Ramadan, our Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would work even harder in the last 10 days of Ramadan to gain nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was the nearest he could ever be. And he was also all the time engaged in that worship. And I give you this example just to say that where are we compared to just the Sahaba radhwanullahi ta'ala alayhi majma'in. Let's not even go up to the maqam of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That if the Prophet was engaged in the last 10 days in even more ibadat, where does that leave us? We're always looking for an excuse to leave the masjid. 
or to leave our ibadat or to close the Quran and do something else. But the Prophet وسلم, whose entire life was nothing but dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he in the last 10 days of Ramadan would even tighten his belt. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said. He used to work even harder. So this is a reminder now. The 10 days of Ramadan will be here before you know it. And forget the last 10 days of Ramadan. We're going to start inshallah today. That we make that effort. We make that niyyah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us that tawfiq from this day. That we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He give us a tawfiq to do everything that He loves. Say Ameen. That we open the Qur'an and read the Qur'an. Say Ameen. That we open the Qur'an, read the Qur'an and understand the Qur'an as well. To make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To make sure that our fasts are such that not only are we hungry or thirsty, but we never lie and we never look at anything we are not supposed to. Say Ameen. May Allah give us all the tawfiq to do so. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, accept our siyam, our qiyam, our ruku', our sujood, and our dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you very sincerely that Ya Allah, everyone that is sitting here, and the whole ummah, Ya Allah, free us all from the hellfire, inshaAllah.